Hello, good morning guys. Ah, morning ah, early morning for for exam preparation. Okay, so uh, I see some of you are actually here already. So good morning before I actually start. Okay, uh, I actually shared a Google Drive link on into the comment section. Uh, you can actually download the the PDF version, the PDF that I actually prepared for just for uh, paper six. So get your PDF ready and then uh, into your iPad. Okay, if you have iPad, that's, that's the best. Then you can actually use the PDF for study onto this class later on. Okay, so uh, I believe some of you are actually still asleep, so don't worry. So this is a YouTube live. You will get this recorded after the YouTube live. Okay, so you can watch this later on. Okay, so what happened is in this PDF, I prepared some some of the very common answering techniques that we actually have in Paper Six. So for those who actually uh, tried uh, on doing Paper Six, we you should know that Paper Six are actually quite the same format throughout the past year and stuff. Uh, so let me just do a brief recap on our format first. Okay, so we have paper two, four, six for extended version. Okay, let's say we have here, we have your multiple choice for paper two, okay, for the five minutes, 40 marks. Okay, paper four, uh, which is the theory, theory questions. If you answer your, uh, in short, short sentence, okay, one hour, 15 minutes, 80 marks, which is what we are focused on, focusing on today is paper six, the alternative to practical, one hour with 40 marks. So this 40 marks here, it's kind of, I would say, quite easy to score. Okay, let me just do a brief introduction on what we have first. Okay? So let's say for here, on paper six, the, the first uh, part we can see from here is actually what are the possible topics we can actually have in your paper six. And actually this format is not, uh, it's not something, it's not a secret. Okay, we can see this, the possible topics one to seven throughout your whole uh, online and stuff. Okay, so this one here is officially announced by the IGCSE Cambridge uh, department. So let's say from here is here. Okay, number, number one here we have simple quantitative experiments involving measurement of volume or masses. Okay, so that's what we know from here. Uh, wait, what, what, what is simple quant quantitative experiments? So technically you have to do your measurements, you have to measure your volume, uh, measure your mass again. Okay. So, uh, tip, uh, technically, you are trying to tabulate your data. Uh, means, uh, if you give you like a weighing balance, okay, then you actually have to write down the how many gram, how many kilogram, and stuff. Then number two, we have your rate of reaction. Okay, rate of reaction also quite 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 common. Uh, as long as they give you like a probably in a five minutes interval, in every thirty seconds. Okay, they collected the data for volume of carbon dioxide gas produced, then you can actually calculate your rate of reaction. So that's number two. Number three, measurement of temperature based on thermometer with one degree Celsius graduation. So this is also quite common uh, because uh, once they give you thermometer, you can actually have to tabulate data. So the first three, it's almost everything about tabulation of data. Then number four, problem of inventory nature, or possibly including suitable organic compounds, which is it might involve a little bit of alkane, alkene, again and some tests maybe to differentiate alkene and alkene. You can use like bromine water and stuff. Then number five, filtration. Okay, so this one very straight to the point, filtration. Number six, electrolysis. Number seven, identification of ions and gases. So of course, definitely guys, paper five will include notes on this uh, qualitative analysis. But you are, if you're in, in, on paper six, I guess you don't. Okay, you all know about this. Okay, so for here, uh, we realize that uh, our one to seven is actually very, very common in all past years. Okay, if you've done it before past years about paper six, technically almost everyone, every every topic here came out. Okay. So the first few information that here, I, I split this paper six into few categories. So the first thing, few things you have to first uh, recognize your apparatus. Okay. So you can see there's this number one list of apparatus. So we have your burette, your pipette. Okay. So burette pipette are actually used to measure volume. So that's what that's what we know. Measure volume, measure volume. Okay. But why? Why do we actually use a uh, burette or pipette instead of like a, like a measuring cylinder? Because you see, measuring cylinder, cylinder it's actually easier to use uh, compared to pipette and burette. 
But the thing is, measuring cylinder is not very accurate. Ah, so the accurate one is actually B-RED and pipette. Okay, so measuring cylinder is like a, a easy, an easy way, but not to say a very accurate way. Ah, okay. Then we have conical flask to hold large amount of chemicals, filter funnel, beaker, uh, thermometer, polystyrene cup, plastic cups, test tubes. Okay, so our first here is there some uh, apparatus provided just to let you go through on what we have. We ask, we ask why? Well, in question number one, they always ask you to actually label your apparatus and uh, the name of the apparatus, your beware pipette and stuff. So later we, when we do some pass here, you actually realize uh, it's actually quite quite easy. Then moving on, then uh, we, can, we kind of need to actually do some measurement. So the common measurement we have in, in paper six is the four main measurements. So number one is time. Okay, so the number one is time, okay. Number two, temperature. Number three, mass. Number four is technically volume. And, and I would say volume, it's very common. Lah. Okay, so if you want, if you compare among the others, okay, so you can see that uh, your stopwatch, thermometer, uh, electronic balance is lesser chance compared to volume because volume is uh, Just for volume, you realize that you can have different apparatuses to measure. Let's say you're going to measure uh, the volume using beaker, approximate volume. Okay, so approximation, you can use beaker, you can use, uh, for a better measurement, you can use measuring cylinder, you can see from here, to the nearest cm cube. Okay, but if you want to have some exact value, okay, some very accurate values, you're going to need B-RED, you're going to need pipette. Okay, so you see from here, to, to the nearest 0 0.1 cm cube, pipette can give you a fixed volume very accurately. Ah, so the most accurate apparatus to measure volume is actually pipette. Okay, so you can see this. You go this goes in sequence, ah, So the 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 most approximate one. Okay, the, the actually the the not very accurate one. You can see it's beaker. Okay, followed by measuring cylinder, burette, and then pipette. Again, okay, so you have to know pipette is the best, lah. Then you can see it's type to measure time, stopwatch to measure thermometer, uh, temperature, thermometer to measure mass. You're gonna use your electronic balance, weighing balance, and stuff. So if you move down here, okay, that if you have a volume of gas, uh, so because all this is measure volume of a certain aqueous liquid, aqueous solution, but for here, gas stringe. Uh, if you have a gas, you're going to need this gas stringe, but you actually have the plunger all the way to the to the end here, okay, plunger here. Uh, but when the gas comes in, when you produce gas, the gas will actually push this plunger to the right, and then it occupies some space, you can measure the volume of gas collected. So definitely from here, okay, these are some uh, apparatus to measure stuff. Then if you move down here, uh, there are some separation methods. You guys saw, uh, if you mentioned, mentioned, if you remember this, how the possible topics that come out in, in, in paper six, one of it is called filtration. Uh, so filtration is just one of it. Lah. But if you actually go down here, if you have filtration to separate, uh, example, set, salt, salt, salt and sand. Uh, but in general, filtration is to, it's a separate one. It's a separate soluble and insoluble substance. Okay, let's say if I have a salt, which is soluble, I have a sand that is insoluble in, in water. So what I can do is I can actually dissolve it into uh, water. Then I actually do filtration. I can filter out the insoluble sand while the salt dissolves into water. You can collect the salt solution at the bottom. You can, you can get the filtrate, okay, the liquid, the filtrate. So this is actually the first and the easiest thing to do. Okay, so we can allow the sand to dry, heat the salt until saturated and allow it to cool. So this is the first one, filtration from here. Then moving on, we have simple distillation. Uh, so distillation is very simple. Okay, I think simple distillation. Ma. Okay, so for, for here, we our, our example here is using ethanol and water. So what's the uh, trend inside here is what, what do simple distillation actually do? So it's to separate, uh, two liquids, okay, which is two liquids with different boiling point. Okay, two liquids with different boiling point. So that's why from here is yeah. Uh, why 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 do I say this? Because uh, let's say for ethanol, it boils around probably seventy eight degrees Celsius, but water boils at hundred degrees Celsius. Ah, okay. So uh, when I heat this uh mixture here. Probably I'm just gonna hit around until 80 degrees Celsius. Why le? Ah, because 80, yeah, it makes the ethanol boil, but the water never boil. Ah, so when this when this actually happens, 
you can realize that your ethanol will actually boil, become gas, and the gas will actually enter the condenser. And condenser, uh, you see, got water in, got water out. So sometimes they might ask to label the direction of this water in, water out. Make sure you know water in and water out. Okay, in always from a bottom, out from a top. Okay, you want you want your water to go against gravity. So you can see from here, you go, it's always going up, water going upwards. Huh? So when the ethanol, when the boil ethanol comes in, it goes into through, through this condenser. So the ethanol will get condensed back well, from gas back to liquid. Then you can collect your pure ethanol here. While water stays inside the round bottom flask, the water, the water stays inside here. Why? Because 80 is not enough to boil your water. Ah, so this is the way to separate your, your, your two solutions with actually different boiling point. Ah. Okay. So definitely from here, we actually have your uh, ethanol water, simple distillation. Then moving down, you actually have fractional distillation. Ah, so this one here actually is a separate, like, of course, you can also separate different, different uh, mixture with different boiling point and different boiling point, uh, with different boiling point and, and melting point. So you can see from here, we actually try to separate your, your air. Ah, because in air, we have actually know that there is a lot of uh, different, different gases inside. We have nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, and different, different things inside here. So what we can do is, you see, so gas A passed into condenser first. At A's boiling point, it condenses there, okay? So collected liquid A as above, stop collecting when temperature on the thermometer rises. So from here, uh, we can actually uh, boil like your mixture, your liquid inside here. So when someone is boiled, it comes up it come, and goes through condenser, you get collected a pure liquid A here. So definitely, this is actually very similar to simple distillation, but then you can actually have different uh, fractioning. You can actually do to collect uh, more than two type of uh, uh, liquid there, we can collect a different more than two type of uh, solution there using fractional distillation. Uh. Uh, so simple distillation is like two type money, but fractional distillation, you can, you can go more than two types. So this is called fractional distillation. Then on the left, you have paper chromatography. This one also very common. Okay, so make sure you know. Uh. So chromatography definitely is a separate small number of substances from which based on different solubility. Ah, uh, so different, <coughs> different, so different chemical have different solubility, right? So you, when you actually do like paper chromatography, uh, what you do first is first you draw your baseline with pencil, and then you apply samples to the paper. So it means you put the sample on the on the base on the baseline, uh, Okay. Then after that, you actually immerse this, uh, paper, paper uh, chromatography paper into the distilled water, into, into the solvent, okay? So any, any solvent at the bottom, uh, that the best is water, okay? So then you can see that you should keep your distilled water or your solvent below the baseline. Okay, don't, don't, don't put over the, uh, the baseline. Uh. Uh, because later on, if you put over the baseline, your soluble chemical on the, on the, on the baseline all actually dissolve into water. Then you cannot get like your, your movement of your, uh, of your, of your chemical going up, so that's why your your chemical your solvent at here always must be below the baseline. And then sometimes they will ask you like, why baseline must be drawn with pencil? Why not pen? Ah, because pen is also ink. So pen using ink, ink is also soluble in water. So when you if you use your baseline as pen using pen to uh, pen to draw baseline, uh, later your baseline also together dissolve uh, with the water. Okay, so you're gonna need pencil because pencil is actually insoluble in water then uh, definitely after you get like after separation you can see that maybe if you have uh, some some mixture it will actually give you into different multiple spots okay if it's a pure substance it should only give you one spot okay so from here guys okay you know that if it's having two different spots three different spots it's a mixture if it's one spot pure substance then you can see you can compare to known RF values you compare to like the table provided then you might know the blue spot is who, maybe the blue spot is uh, sugar, maybe the other spot, the yellow spot is is uh, uh, is other chemical. Lah. Okay, so this is paper chromatography. You separate stuff by using different solubility. Going down, we have crystallization and evaporation. These two is very similar. Okay, why? Because you are both heating them. Okay, but then the first one is crystallization. You heat until saturated. Then you allow it to cool to get the salt crystal. You rinse it with distilled water, dry it by, by using filter paper. So this one here, this crystallization here, uh, is actually a bit different from evaporation. Uh, so actually evaporation, uh, uh, you actually also 
heat it a little bit, okay, heat it a little bit, but not as strong as the crystallization. So actually, crystallization and evaporation is almost the same thing, just with a little bit of difference in, in temperature. So uh, well, sometimes if you do like crystallization, uh, your salt, maybe if you heat too much, your salt might decompose, your salt might actually, the salt you collected, uh, you might actually overheat it, then it becomes something else. Uh, so so the other, sometimes you, if you know that your salt has low melting or boiling point, it can be easily decomposed, then we do evaporation. Okay. So these are the six different uh, separation methods that we actually have in our paper six. So possibly, okay, possible then you go through everything here. Then on, on number, number three, we have your salt preparation. So first thing first, we have to know that what salt are soluble, what salt are insoluble. So that's why from here, I categorize into three categories. So we have your, we call it the span salt, S-P-A-N. So S-P-A-N stands for sodium, potassium, ammonium, and nitrate. Okay, then uh, moving on, or, or, why do we call this span salt? So span salt is all soluble. So you realize that I put an all soluble with a tick there. Means any salt with these four ions is always soluble in water. Okay, then for the COOH, the carbonate ions, the carbonate salt, metal oxide, metal hydroxide. So anything with CO3 2 minus, O2 minus, OH minus, they are always insoluble, except, you see, see the word there, except if you, all, if you actually pair with SPA. Uh, so if you talk about, let's say, uh, magnesium oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, heavy oxide, right? So you see the word, heavy oxide, it's actually insoluble. But if you check that, we realize that K2O, maybe potassium oxide, even with the oxide, this is still soluble because in the front here, you have potassium, okay? So definitely from here, you must know that these are all insoluble except spa. Ah, then for chloride and sulfate, these two adhere is some is a special sort because sometimes it's soluble, sometimes it's insoluble. Ah, so what, what, what I categorize here is, is yeah, uh, it, it is usually all soluble except if you if your Cl combines with Pb, Ag, and Hg. So let's say for here, PBCl2, AgCl, HgCl, these three are actually insoluble. Uh, so guys, means, that, means this six here is insoluble. Okay, it's insoluble. Huh? So how, how, how do you say insoluble? Because anything with sulfate and chloride usually soluble. Huh? For example, let's say like a, maybe like a magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. Ah, so you see the SO4? SO4 is actually soluble. Okay, SO4, MgSO4 is actually soluble. But if you see like uh, PbSO4, BaSO4, CaSO4, ah, then it becomes insoluble. Okay, so these are some exceptional cases. Make sure you know how to, how to recognize uh, soluble and insoluble salt. Then after knowing the solubility, we can now prepare your salt. Uh, how to prepare salt? We again categorize them according to the three different categories here. So I categorize them in this way, soluble spa, soluble non-spa, and insoluble salt. So what's the meaning of soluble spa, soluble non-spa, and insoluble salt? Ah, so, see. so soluble got two types, spa and non-spa. Hey, what is spa? So spa is I told you, spa stands for SPA, which is the sodium, potassium, and ammonium. So if you want to produce a soluble spa salt, okay, the, the, the name of the reaction is called neutralization, where you have to use acid plus alkaline. Ah, so let's say if you want to produce an ACL, sodium chloride at here. Okay, wait now guys, let me adjust my, uh, my laser first, uh, my laser pointer. My laser pointer though, seems like having some problem because it becomes fat a little bit, you see? My laser pointer, very fat. Don't know why. It used to be very skinny. Maybe some new update. Okay, okay, so from here, uh, so to produce NaCl, we realize that we're going to use acid plus alkaline. Uh. So how do I actually brainstorm about it? Means I'm going to actually think about some acid that has uh, Cl, some alkaline that has sodium. Okay, so how do I know? So you see my, my acid, I'm going to use HCl. You know why? Because hydrochloric acid gives you the Cl. Okay, can you say, teacher, can I use like H2SO4? Let's say if I say like, teacher, if what if I use like h 2 uh, H2SO4, then can you get Cl at the back? Cannot. So you have to use some relatable acid and relatable alkaline. Okay, so you can see we, we put in H, we put in OH, 
you get after a reaction, you get an ACL with the water. Okay, so definitely from here is the way to produce soluble spa. And there are some procedures provided. You can see we use phenolphthalein. Okay, we we buret. Uh, you put acid, conical flask. You have your alkaline. Then you just do your titration. Okay, so, so the method name is called titration method. The reaction name is called neutralization. So make sure you know uh, the, the difference in the name. So neutralization reaction and titration method. Okay, so these are the difference from here. Then of course, definitely after you when you produce your soluble salt, because this salt here you produce is a soluble salt. Nah. What happened to it? Sometimes they want you to produce like, like to collect a dry sample. So a dry sample means what? Means you have to heat, cool, filter, rinse, and dry. So what's the meaning of heat, cool, filter, rinse, and dry? So you can see I use, usually use these five words to memorize. Lah. Ah, hippo can fly really dangerous. Okay, so you see, number one, step one is heat. You heat it until saturated, or, or you can say the one third of its original volume in, a, in, in an evaporating dish. After heating it, allow it to cool for crystallization. Once crystallization occur, means you collected your, your salt crystals, right? Then you how to get the crystal out? You filter it, rinse it with a little distilled water, and finally dry it by pressing between filter papers. So these are actually the, the five common steps to collect a salt that is soluble in water to make it a dry salt. Okay, so this is actually what we see from here. Then if you're moving on to the right side, to produce soluble non-spa. Ah, non-spa means like, Beside having a salt with sodium, potassium, or ammonium, the so soluble non spa so for example, like zinc sulfate, ZnSO4. Uh, so there are actually four different ways to produce this uh, zinc sulfate method. But to, to actually use this, actually, either one actually works. So let's say if I actually add acid plus metal. So to produce zinc sulfate, I'm going to use an acid that is related to sulfate. Uh, so what acid or sulfate? So the acid with sulfate is actually sulfuric acid. So you can see I'm going to use H2SO4. Then the metal to actually give you zinc sulfate, definitely I'm going to use zinc. So if you need to produce like calcium uh, CaSO4, then you're just going to use like Ca. Okay. So change according to the question. Then you can see that uh, either one of these also give you your zinc sulfate, just that with different side product. So side product will be, will be slightly different according to what we actually have in our in our reactant. Then definitely from here, you see, uh, at, there's one very important part here that students always forget. When you do this experiment, uh, you are actually adding all these, these, these four, these are all solid, which is they are all in powder form. Usually, uh, okay, they are all in powder form. Then you can see that you actually add until excess, okay, until excess powder. What is excess means that to ensure your all the acid is actually fully reacted because it, imagine this experiment here. If acid plus metal, uh, uh, you, you are pouring metal into acid. Uh. Can, do you just pour like one spatula or two spatula? No. You have to keep on adding your metal powder until the metal don't dissolve anymore. Why? Because if you add like one spatula, two spatula, your metal fully dissolve, but your acid is not fully reacted. That means you have some leftover acid inside your chemical, right? Means you cannot get your pure salt. So to get pure salt, we actually have to make sure all acid fully completed, fully reacted. So we add a lot of metal powder into it. Metal powder add, add a lot add until it cannot dissolve anymore. Then only you filter out the unreacted powder. Ah, you filter out the extra powder. The, that, then only you can get your pure salt produced from this method here. So once again, I'm going to do heat, cool, filter, rinse, and dry. Ah, because of what? Because of a soluble salt. Ah, so you see, yeah, guys, any, anytime when you produce soluble salt, and you want to make it a dry salt, make sure you do. Hippo can fly really dangerous. Ah, so these are the these are the stuff we can see from here. Lah. Okay, so this is your soluble spa, soluble non-spa, and then we have some, some insoluble salt here. So insoluble salt the last as the last part here, you will call it the double decomposition reaction, or we can call it the precipitation method. So to, to actually use this uh to use it to, to actually use this method. You have to remember the requirement to use this method. So what we know is, okay, in order to produce insoluble salt, the requirement must be soluble salt plus soluble salt. Ah, right. So you must use two soluble salt uh, so that later on they can actually mix together and then they exchange the ions uh, to, 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 to get your, your, your insoluble salt. So you can see from here, eh, let's say if I want to produce like PBSO4. Okay, so this PBSO4 at here, 
uh, I need two salts that contains, one contains PB, one contains SO4. So later on can exchange to get PB SO4. Uh, so that's it for here. So your lead two nitrate, I'm gonna use uh, mixed with sodium sulfate. Why why must be like this? Eh? Why must be lead nitrate and sodium sulfate? So the first thing that you should come to your mind is this salt must have PB. The, I want the PB inside this salt and I want the SO4 inside this salt. So later on when they exchange ions, they can get PB SO4. And then why must be sodium and nitrate? It's actually not fixed, but make sure you get a soluble salt. So this Na and NO3, I add the partner Na and NO3 to the PB and to the SO4. It's because it's how we learn already. Ah, spun salt is always soluble in water, right? So to make sure that this two is a soluble salt, I added I add spun salt into it. I add a spun partner to it. So I added nitrate to PB, I added sodium to SO4. So actually both of them are actually soluble. Ah, okay, I make sure they are actually soluble. After reaction, you get insoluble. Okay. But this one here, after producing this salt here, you don't have don't have to heat and cool because it's already an insoluble salt, which is a solid. Ah, so if, if it's already a solid, you just have to filter, rinse, and dry. Okay. No need to heat and cool already. Huh? Okay, one moment, guys. I started the stream nine at nine a.m. Wait, uh, guys, someone forgot about it. Why? Why my student cannot join? Did I actually use a, a wrong Yahweh? Why why he didn't start my Oh I just realized that why 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 this life is actually separate from the one I schedule? Funny though, a uh, bit weird. Hey, so how, how you guys actually find this? You all saw it on my main page, is it? Because the link I shared is a separate streaming from this. Hey, why, why different now? Huh? Okay, it's okay. I guess should be fine. Do you know, man? Okay. 
Okay, never mind. Let's just move on. Okay, so after that, okay, so I have to click into your YouTube profile to find it. Oh, is it? Yeah, la, that's how I see. Uh. No wonder, no wonder Mike can't can find the can't find can't join the, the live. Like why? Why? Why he actually separate my my link though? Why he separate my link? Ah to this YouTuber. Okay, so hopefully people manage to find it. One moment, guys. One moment. Okay, so let me just move on. Huh? Uh, let me drink some water first. Okay, so guys, after knowing all the ways and the methods to produce your salt, then sometimes you can ask, they'll ask you like, why do we rinse the residue? Because you see, after the hippo can fly really dangerous, at the rinse set, we rinse it a little distilled water. So there are two different conditions. If after you rinse, you want the residue, means you want the solid. So the reason you rinse it is actually to remove or wash away some soluble impurities. So you want your residue to be pure and then without any other soluble impurities, you, you rinse it. But if you want to have the filtrate, means the, the after filter, the liquid that left over is called a filtrate. So to make sure, ensure all filtrate is obtained. Ah, because some, if some of your filtrate is not dissolved, it's still in the residue. So you, you rinse it, you rinse the residue to make sure all, of you, all the chemical you want is fully, fully dissolved and you can collect all the filtrate you produce. And then moving down, you actually have to go on uh, the indicators. So indicators at here, you can see. Ah, the, there are Lima's paper indicators, red Lima's paper, blue Lima's paper, Universal indicator, phenolphthalein, limit solution, meteor orange. So this one here, I hope you guys just have to spend a little bit of time just to memorize it. Okay, so not, nothing much here. Just go on with these indicators. Then move on. We have the final, not to, not to say final, but consider the hardest part in your whole paper six because you kind of need to actually memorize and get uh, very used to these tables here. Okay. So from here, you can see here, yeah, we have test for anions and test for cations. So from here, you see carbonate acid, you get effervescence because carbon dioxide is produced. Then chloride, bromide, iodide, they do the same thing. Add acid first and then add aqueous silver nitrate. So silver will make three of them become a precipitate, but become white, cream, and yellow. So at here, uh, the three different results here. Make sure you got ice and memorize it. By nitrate, you add sodium hydroxide, then aluminum foil. Warming carefully, you get ammonia produced. But how to how to test ammonia? That's at the bottom here. This is some test for gas. So the test ammonia gas, to, it turns your damn red Lewis paper blue. So they they actually like 
this whole topic up here is all about your test. So then you can see like sulfate, uh, acidify it. Then you add barium nitrate, you get a white precipitate. Sulfide, you add acid, warm gently, test with the presence of, uh, and test for the presence of sulfur dioxide. You actually add this thing called the acidified potassium manganese 7. It goes from purple to colorless. So that's like to prove that, to prove that sulfur dioxide is actually present. Then if you go down, uh, the test for cations also actually appearing to be here. So we have aluminium, aluminum and zinc is actually quite similar because you see by adding the first uh, chemical called the aqueous sodium hydroxide and then the effect of aqueous ammonia. So means in every cations, we actually add two chemicals uh, 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 one after each other. So what's the meaning of it? See, so why do we actually have to like two, two reaction here? Because you see, uh, by adding the first chemical, the sodium hydroxide, you can't really differentiate your aluminum and zinc. Why? Because they show you the same observation. You get white precipitate, soluble in excess, giving a colorless solution. So technically, uh, aluminum and zinc, uh, you can't really know it unless you do the ammonia test. Uh, so when you do ammonia tests on aluminum, it gives you white precipitate, but it, it's, it is actually insoluble in excess. But for zinc, after you add ammonia, you still get white precipitate, Later on, the white precipitate is actually soluble in excess, giving a colorless solution. So the, the, the steps that actually differentiate aluminum and zinc is actually the aqueous ammonia. So that's why we need the second ammonia test here is because the first test can't differentiate everyone. Uh, by adding sodium hydroxide, you can get most of the answer because you see chromium-3 is green precipitate, but it's soluble in excess. Iron-2 is green, green precipitate, insoluble in excess. Iron 3, brown red, red brown precipitate, so insoluble in excess. Copper is light blue precipitate, insoluble in excess. So from here, by adding sodium hydroxide, you kind of easily get all the color ions come out, very simple. Then you see like calcium is white precipitate, insoluble in excess. Okay, then after adding ammonia, it becomes no precipitate or very slight white precipitate. So if you see from here, this is a table that we're having some special uh, colors or maybe some special properties, special tests from here, special test results. If nothing is actually, uh, if, if you see the ion in exam, it's not appearing in this table. For example, like magnesium is not here. For example, like uh, any other example, it may be uh, iron is here, uh, silver, okay, silver is not here. So technically silver, okay, all those ions, they are actually uh, not inside here, is considered white. Okay, consider white. So you can add one more word for me here. So you can say all, uh, all non-transition ion, you always get like white precipitate. Okay, means you always, always, always see white precipitate. Or maybe just white. Uh, if it's not white, then it will be colorless. Either one. Uh, for all non-transition ion, okay, for example, like magnesium ion, lithium ion, sodium ion, it's always colorless. If it's a solid, it's always a white precipitate. Okay, means anything else besides this table, it's white or colorless. Okay, that's what we know from here. Then definitely going down some gas tests here, which read through it, uh, some flame tests for your metal ion. Okay, and lastly, some extra one. So if you want to test alkene, you add bromine water. If you want to test water, we're going to add like anhydrous copper to sulfate. Or the other one is the copper, uh, cobalt chloride paper, turns from blue to pink. Okay, so make sure you guys, these are all the test results. You're going to ne actually need this table later on when we do some exercise, okay? So later on when we do exercise on this topic, right, I will need you guys to try to refer to the table. Then we're going to spam a lot of questions, slowly getting used to it. Then you can actually slowly memorize it okay so guys these are all the uh the topics that are actually quite common in paper six lah. so hopefully this extra note will help you guys in paper six okay so if everyone is okay i'm gonna just gonna move on to exercise okay so guys any question please just ask in the in the chat box okay and let me know even though youtube uh stream is slightly delayed but i'll try my best to answer you guys okay uh, so you can go on to this. Okay, I actually added some parts here. I included some parts here into our uh, notes at the back. 
Okay, here is actually your May June 2019. Okay, paper six, version one. Okay, uh, if you want to get this, it's actually in the Google Drive link that I actually pinned to the chat box. So click the Google Drive link, then uh, download it. Try to do it together with me, lah. Okay, so guys, if you move on, okay, going down, going down. Okay, so this is like the first question. So this one is 2019. Okay, 2019, May, June, paper 6 1. Okay, so from here, uh, let's start. Uh. Okay, so paper 6 1. So let's say for number one, you can see that this is actually a, a diagram to show you to prepare a dry sample of chlorine gas. So chlorine is more dense than, than air, that's the hint they gave you. And then complete the boxes to name the apparatus. So what's the name of this, this, this flask? Uh, so actually very simple. Uh. This flask one, they give you the hint there already. This one, this triangular shape, we call this the conical flask. Okay, conical flask. Then for the other one, that is actually like inverted. Okay, so this one, there is no measurement. Usually uh, uh, a design like this, it looks like a measuring cylinder, but then there is no measurement. So a measuring cylinder without, without measurement is called a gas jar. Okay, conical flask, gas jar, quite easy to mark. Use the diagram above to identify two mistakes the student actually made. So if you check this diagram here, guys, uh, if you read through it, is there any other mistake? Uh, is, there any, is, is there two mistakes here? Because they say they need two. Ma. So definitely there are two mistakes inside this diagram here. So if you check, uh, Mm, let, let's let's go by the flow, okay? So you see like I have acid and then some manganese uh, oxide inside here. So when you actually carry out this reaction here, they will produce some gas. So the gas will actually flow, 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 and then into the concentrated sulfuric acid. Then uh, the gas after going through sulfuric acid, it will continue flow, 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 flow into the gas jar, okay? So one thing here, guys. Do you see that the tube here is actually not connected to this part here? So what's the meaning of it? it? Means that we want the gas to dissolve into acid, okay? But actually, this acid here is actually to dry off the the gas because they want you to have dry sample. Ah, so this concentrated sulfur acid here is actually like a like a drying agent, a dehydrating agent. Then the gas will go up to this gas jama. So is if the if this is a gas and you realize that the second flask is missing a part that is very important. Ah, if because if this is a gas, ah, how can you ensure all the gas adhere to go into this tube? Correct. Ah, why not go outside? Why not go to the left? Okay. So all this adhere, definitely it's wrong. Ah, what is actually wrong? So the, the wrong part is you don't have a stopper here. Ah, you're gonna need a stopper there. Okay, so this stopper here is to stop all the gas from flowing out so that you can actually flow into this tube here. So this one here, you can actually call it a stopper, but to be exact, the a stopper with holes is called a bung. So for the first mistake is you say no bung in second flask. No bung in second floss. Okay, then number two. Okay, since this is a gas, and they say chlorine is more dense, more dense than air, then your gas jar inverted like this. Means when the gas come out, the chlorine gas come out, it's gonna U-turn because of the gravity, because it's more dense than air. It's gonna start to actually move downwards. So is this how you're gonna collect your gas, your, chlor your chlorine gas? No. So you should actually invert invert this. So your your answer here, you can say gas jar should not be inverted. Okay, this gas jar here should be just facing this on a on a table. No need to actually hold it like facing upwards.
Okay, then if you go down, suggest one reason why the gas produced in flask one is passed through concentrated sulfur acid. So just like I mentioned this, is to actually to dry the gas. Okay, because you want to draw, you want to, you want to collect a dry chlorine gas. So to dry the gas. And what is the test for chlorine? Ah, so for, for chlorine gas test, guys, just now in our notes, you now you see, let's say for chlorine gas test, chlorine gas to test it, you actually, it bleaches your damn litmus paper. So you're gonna actually first need your litmus paper. Okay, so the test here, you can say litmus paper. And then you can say it bleaches. So you can say what bleaches, or you can say turn white, turns white. Because bleach means turn something white. Ma. So this is your answer. You see, my notes helps you a lot. Huh? So make sure you re refer to the notes. Huh? And then suggest why experiment is done in a film chamber. Ah, so guys, this one no, because chlorine is a gas. Ma. And if you inhale chlorine gas, it gives you all these bleaching properties. Because chlorine will actually react with water around you, and then it actually becomes an acid and bleaching properties. So if you inhale chlorine into your lungs, your lungs will actually form the acidic and bleaching properties. So very, very dangerous. So fume chamber is like a it's like a wardrobe, okay, uh, with a with the glass in front of you, you can put your hand in with a ventilator inside so that you don't have to inhale the chlorine gas. So this one here, you can say chlorine gas is maybe poisonous, dangerous, toxic, Okay, and then if you move on, on question number two, there are a lot of results given. So guys, you see question one, not very hard, right? Labeling, finding mistakes, some test results. Okay. And then moving down. Okay, from number two here, there's actually an experiment to investigate the reaction between sodium carbonate, so here, sodium carbonate, and barium nitrate. Okay. So what happened here is the bureau was filled with aqueous sodium carbonate, seven test tube was labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A measuring cylinder was used to pour 60 m cube of aqueous barium nitrate into each of these test tube here. So one cm cube to test tube one, two cm cube to test tube two, all the way to actually from one, two, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so three is missing. Okay. I don't think it's a typo. Lah, huh? So just follow with it. Then what they do is the glass roster. And all the well, then the test tube was actually left to stand until solid form has settled. So you let you let the, the the solid settle down first. Then only you take a ruler to measure the height of the solid form in each test tube. So guys, this one here actually is actually very simple. Just put in, uh, just take a ruler and then measure the height in millimeter. Okay, so you see they, they put the word height of solid slash millimeter. So the best here is to actually, uh. What they use is to actually fill up the table at here. Ah, so what is the volume of aqueous sodium carbonate? So according to the question, volume of aqueous sodium carbonate is this one? Ah, so this nice. put this in, you get a free mark. So this is definitely 1.0, and 8.0. And okay, what happened is if you take a ruler and measure, because guys, right now, I don't think you guys have the hard copy version, right? So here, I just gonna give you uh, according to marking scheme. Lah. So if you just take a ruler and measure, it's the same, it will be the same thing to actually. Okay, so to go in millimeters, so it's 12, 24, 48, 60, 73, 73, 73. So this one is, uh, marking scheme answer lah, huh? what you can do is if you if you really want to try you can print this out in a4 paper and then try to measure this in, in millimeter okay so the next is actually to actually plot ah so i hope you guys have tried 
on plotting a graph uh, in, in paper number six, because most of the paper six have a graph plotting. You're going to need to actually plot this uh, easily. So how to plot this? So I guess it's provided very simple. And then label x-axis. Oh, okay. So there we have y-axis, the height of solid, which is the, your result. And what is your variable here? Definitely it's your volume of equal solid component. If it's one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here we know that x-axis should be volume of equals sodium carbonate in cm cube. Okay, and actually they give you all the the numbers here, which is very kind of them, very good. Okay, then just label them according to one cm cube is 12 millimeter. So one cm cube is 12, so 10, 12. Okay, 12 millimeter. And then uh, for two cm cube is 24. So two cm cube is 24. Three cm cube don't have, then you have four cm cube. Uh, 4 cm cube is uh, 48. 48. Hey, sorry, guys. 4 cm cube. Don't, uh, 3 cm cube don't have. Huh? You should we go to 4 cm cube. Huh? So 4 cm cube is 48. Okay, and then number 5, 5 cm cube is actually 60. And then 73, 73, 73. Huh? So 5 is 60. Six is 73, 73, 73. Okay, and then say draw two intersecting line of best fit. So what is best fit? Means that you're gonna actually draw a straight line with best fit. And then another straight line at the last trend. The last tree is the same trend. Okay, and then you get an intersecting point. So that's a, that's a two straight line you should draw from here. Ah, so this is called the two intersecting line of the best fit. So it means draw two best fit and then intersect them. You see something like this. Okay, so from your graph, ah, deduce the height if it's 3 cm cube. So it's not 3, 3 cm cube. Uh, no, no point, right? Uh, now they want you to find according to the trend, according to the best fit line. Show clearly on the grid how you work out your answer. So from here, okay, we know that 3 cm cube is here. So I'm going to actually draw a line. Okay, so you see the, the red color line there. And then the part that we actually get it, draw it to your y-axis. So this is actually 30, then 32, 4, 6, 37. Ah, so from here, it will be 37 millimeter. Okay, then describe the trend of the height. So how the trend go? Go up and then straight line. Ah, so the trend goes in. Height increases. And becomes constant. So that's from here. A very short and straightforward answer. So paper six is like this. Ah, you get like you you actually answer this, answer the part very simple, straight to the point. Okay, moving down, predict what will happen if experiment was will continue using three further test tubes, each containing six. 
barium nitrate and separately adding 9, 10 to 11 cm cube of aqueous sodium carbonate to each one. So if you put more, see, uh, containing 6 cm cube barium nitrate, separate, separately adding 9, 10, and 11. So just now was uh, barium nitrate. Okay, so you see, guys, means the barium nitrate remain the same, 6 cm cube, just that you add more sodium carbonate. But you've realized the trend is, even you, starting from 6 onwards, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, everyone actually still produces the same amount of uh, solid, amount of product. Why? Because I told you, when you do chemical reaction, okay, you have to understand that chemical reaction go, go in this concept, I see, huh? Let's say in you have uh, 5 gram of chemical A, you have my 10 gram of chemical B. So you're going to actually form maximum, uh, maximum uh, only 5 gram of chemical C. Why? Why only 5 gram? Why cannot get you 10 gram? Eh? Uh, why you I say, teacher, I got 10 gram of B, why not get me 10 gram of C? The thing is, when you actually go, go on with chemical, chemical reaction, who decides your, your product at the end is actually the one that is lesser. Ah, the one that is always lesser decides your product. Why? Eh? Because when A finishes here, eh? will B have any reaction? No. So the left will be totally no reaction. It stays alone. It don't produce any more C. So that's why who decides your, uh, your, your amount of product is always the one that is actually lesser. So at here, eh, you see like 6 cmq of aqueous barium nitrate. And then you add 9, 10, 11. Eh, means it's already more than the aqueous barium nitrate granite. So it means barium nitrate finish. Then you still continue to add more sodium carbonate. Then sodium carbonate where got reaction? No ma. Ah, no reaction with barium nitrate. No more. It's already no more barium, barium nitrate. So that's why from here, you can see that same height of solid will form. Why? Why same height? Ah, it's because is because all barium nitrate reacted. Okay, you finish all barium nitrate. And then suggest one change. Might ask it finished because the line constants, the line constant same, right? Uh the other way around, the line is constant because it's finished. Ah, okay, the line becomes constant because one of the chemicals is fully caught, fully reacted. No more already. Okay, so guys, ah, just like Mike. Okay, any question, please ask. Huh? Okay, so just one change to the apparatus, which could be made to obtain more accurate results. So if you go back up and try to find any problem that is making your result not very accurate. So if you see, uh, accuracy is usually affected by your apparatus. So if you go on with your apparatus and read through it, you realize that there is a measuring cylinder is used. Ah, okay. So when a measuring cylinder is used, means what? It's not accurate. How, as I mentioned just now, in the apparatus, what is the better alternative for measuring volume? So we have like Vred. We have like pipette. Ah, okay. So a burette is more, it's more accurate. Lah. So you can say a uh, burette. So use burette to measure aqueous barium nitrate. Okay, suggest a different method to ensure the amount of solid form during the experiment. So uh, to measure the amount of solid form, okay, just now we use ruler to measure. Right? Uh, but what is the other way to measure the amount of solid? So what you can do is technically if you want to measure the solid, if the height is not what you want right now, maybe we can measure the mass because it's solid, right? Uh, so solid, you can measure mass. So how to measure the mass of a solid? We're going to use a a weighing balance. 
But do you take the whole thing and go and measure? No ma, so you have to first take out the solid. Then take your solid, go to measure. Okay, so how to take a solid out? So here is a, it's a solid. Filter it out, rinse it, and then weigh it. Ah, okay. So definitely guys, also to dry it up because if you don't dry it, like there are some like a water on it, some impurities on it. Okay, so from here, you can say uh, filter the solid and dry it. Okay, filter the solid and dry it. So after you filter the solid and after you dry it, then you can actually weigh the solid using weighing balance. Or you can use electronic balance, also can. Uh, guys, a bit hungry. Yeah. I I had light light breakfast. So getting hungry now. Okay, then going down, suggest how uh, reliability of the result could be checked. So what we do is guys, how to make sure your result is, is correct. How to make sure your result is actually accurate. So in all kind of experiments in biophysical chemistry, the best way to get your result, to double check your result, is to repeat the experiment. Ah, so repeat experiment and compare results. Okay, going down, now it's the time to do your test. Ah, so guys, let me go through this one with you. Huh? Later, the next paper, you all do it yourself, okay? So let's say for here, we have solution F and solid G were analyzed. F was a dilute hydrochloric acid. Then tests were done on F and G. F was divided to four equal portions in four test tubes. The pH for the first, four, first portion of test, the solution F was tested. So guys, since we know F is an acid, and it's hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid means it's actually a very strong acid. What is the usual pH for a strong acid? So according to our pH value, pH table, so if it's a strong acid, it should be very near to your, uh, to your, it's a, very near to your small number. Okay, so here, your answer is actually probably just pH one, up to you. Uh, one, two, three, acceptable. Okay, then magnesium ribbon was added to second portion of solution F. The gas was produced and tested. Okay, the gas was produced and tested. So what happened, guys? What is the gas that you think that you actually release? Because they want observation, right? So uh, first thing you can think about the gas. Huh? You got, so you have to try to brainstorm what gas is produced if you put it magnesium ribbon into like hydrochloric acid. So if you brainstorm about it, magnesium ribbon is actually Mg. Hydrochloric acid is actually HCl. So what happened is your Mg, because it's actually more electropositive, it will kick off the H, becomes Mg, Cl2, and forms you H2. Ah, so definitely the gas here produced is actually a hydrogen gas. So the first thing you can see here, you get gas coming out. Of. So we can say effervescence occur. Ah, if you're 
effervescence is not very good. Okay, you guys, teacher, I don't really use effervescence. Can you can say bubbles form? Okay, that's the first observation. Once you if once you get this out, then you can say tested. So how do we test hydrogen gas? Ah, so guys, to test hydrogen gas. Again, if you go back to our notes in the front, to test hydrogen gas, right here, it pops with a lighted split. Ah, so you're going to actually put a lighted wooden splinter into this hydrogen gas. It gives you a pop sound. Okay, so that's what we know. Okay, so we can say uh, insert. Lighted spleen into test tube containing the gas. And pop sound is heard. Okay, and then dilute nitric acid and aqueous silver nitrate was added to the third portion. Ah, so guys, so uh, if you add silver nitrate uh, into solution F, uh, what do you think it actually happen? So if you think about this, guys, silver nitrate is to test what? So if you go back up to the to the table that we just look at it just now, silver nitrate is here. You see, you added nitric acid and then aqueous silver nitrate. So silver nitrate gives you white precipitate, cream precipitate, with yellow precipitate, according to different chloride, bromide, and iodide. So actually, uh, your acid definitely contains chloride. Ah, so acid got chloride with the aqueous silver nitrate, so you can get the white precipitate. Ah, so at here, we know that the answer for this, after adding the silver nitrate, you get white precipitate. Okay, but if you put barium nitrate to the hydrochloric acid, so barium nitrate is what? Barium nitrate. So if you go into barium nitrate, so try to find any reaction with barium nitrate. So barium nitrate gives you white precipitate if you actually have sulfate ion. But here, got no sulfate ion. You only got hydrochloric acid. So adding barium nitrate, does it give you white precipitate? No. So you can say no changes or no reaction. No changes, no change, no reaction. Okay, then now we have solid G. Okay, uh, for solid G, guys, what you can do? Okay, now I try to do it once with you guys. Huh? So white, uh, solid G is actually white. So by having, by knowing that solid G is white, uh, white solid, what happened is, uh, guys, one moment, uh, let me, let me, let me settle some stuff first.
okay so back to here is here so solid g uh you see a white solid uh, so from the white solid word here means you know what you know that this cannot be those that having color lo. so having color like those copper to iron to iron three cannot be solid g anymore uh, so at here okay so that but white solid is a very general answer la. you cannot know who is the exact uh, exact ion exact solid g yet. then in test number one you added hydrochloric acid to add solid g and then the gas produced was tested when you turn your lime water milky ah so guys you have a rapid effervescence which is with your uh with all the gas coming out and then lime water turn milky ma. ah so when it turns milky you realize that if you go back to your notes again a gas release that turns lime water milky carbon dioxide gas. So what do we know from here, guys? By knowing that this gas is carbon dioxide, okay? By knowing the gas is carbon dioxide, what does it prove? It proves the presence of one of the ions that we have. Ah, what ions is actually we are having? So again, to the notes, okay? Uh, if you have a carbon dioxide produced, it's trying to prove that carbonate ions is present okay so carbonate ion is present so from here your carbonate ion is present so here we see that this here kill you co3 2 minus okay then that 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 decides your anion so so now we're going to find out your cation okay so let's say for here test two an excess of helium hydroxide because of the hydroxide added to the first portion, a white precipitate form which was insoluble in excess. So you try to take this information, sodium hydroxide test, and this is the observation, right? You take these two things, okay, sodium hydroxide test, go and check your sodium hydroxide table and try to see who fits your white precipitate which is insoluble. Uh, so if you go back here into the, into the notes, you see the sodium hydroxide table falls here, okay? And who gives you a white precipitate that is actually insoluble? Which is only here. Ah, white precipitate, insoluble in excess. So who is it? Calcium. Yeah, can I? So definitely from here, you realize that this is Ca2+. So combine them, guys. What is solid G? Calcium carbonate okay guys any question on the testing of anions and testing for cations hopefully everyone okay with this huh so most importantly refer to the table but in exam no table provider right so you kind of need to spam a lot of questions to remember stuff on the table. But having a table is very helpful, right? Ah, so you see, by using table, you see, teacher, I can do with table. So if you can, first thing, you, you step by step, okay? You take it slow. So do it with table first, okay? Keep on doing question with table. Then slowly ditch the table. Slowly ditch the table. You realize that eventually it will be in your mind. Ah, okay. Can okay, I? So what we can do now, guys, going down to the last part here, every paper six have question number four, which is actually planning experiment. Ah, uh, so question four is always planning experiment. Okay, so at here, what is planning experiment? So you see, number one, uh, this question here is steel nail rust in the presence of air and water. Plan an investigation to show that coating steel nails with paint helps to protect nails from rusting. Show that coating steel nails with zinc helps it pro to protect nails from rusting. Determine which coating is more effective at protecting steel nail. And then you're provided with uncoated steel nail, steel nail with zinc, steel nail with paint, and common laboratory apparatus. So therefore, the funny thing here is we want to see which coating uh, uh, can prevent your iron nail from rusting the best, okay, the more effective one. So how to actually give your nail rusting? Uh, so first we actually have to think about what makes your iron nail rust. So definitely we have, we need oxygen, we need water, 
because water oxygen is the one that you can actually make your iron rust. So what we can do? Put into a test tube with water. Hey, because water got oxygen inside, also got water. Ah, so it speeds up your rusting process. You don't have to get, you, can, you cannot just like put it on a table and then you, you put a camera there to, to record it. Ah, no, no, no. So to actually get your uh, result faster, we actually put it into water. Okay. Then what do we do? Uh, we can actually try to set a time, maybe like uh, one week later, okay, maybe two, a few days later. Then we can see that which one actually give you the most rusting, who gives the least rusting, who, the one who gives you the least rusting will be the better coating. Okay, how to get this into six marks? So usually for planning experiment, first we have to analyze your variables. So what's our variables? So for the first one, your manipulated variables is your uh, coating. Okay, we use different coating. Ma. Uh, one is pain coating, one is zinc coating. So after these two coating, then what's your responding variable? Is your rusting level? Uh, who, who, who got more rust, who got lesser rust? Okay, so definitely from here, uh, what is our last one? The constant variable, or we can call it a fixed variable. So to ensure it's a fair experiment, uh, just like I told you, like we're going to set a, a time, so which is the the period for rusting, uh, period for rusting. Okay, Miss, I cannot say, teacher, can I leave like the zinc for two days, but the, the pain for three days, cannot. So you have to put for the same amount of days. So what we can do? Okay, so to observe your uh, rusting, you, if you want a better result, you can uh, have a measurement, such as your weight, your mass measurement, measure the weight of the iron nail before and after rusting, then you know who gives you more rust, who gives you less rust. Okay, if not, you can just look at, you can just observe it, just, just look at the iron nail. Uh, so what we can do, we can first uh, place steel nail Okay, no way, lah. Place, yeah, one more thing. Place uncoated steel nails. Then steel nails coated with paint. And steel nails coated with zinc. into three separate test tubes. So it means you try to imagine that you're doing the experiment, you're planning the experiment, so you put three uh, nails into it, then add water into three test tubes. Okay, after preparing your manipulated variables, it's time to set your control variables. So now we're gonna leave the nails in water for a week. Okay, for example, I'm gonna leave it there for a week. And then what do we do? We can actually observe and compare the result of nail rusting. And then what do we do? Okay, after you observe and compare, so what's your conclusion? Ah, so guys, after writing this, these few things here, you have a mini conclusion. Uh, so that's what you have to include in your planning experiment. Variables and conclusion. Okay, try, try to write variables and also the conclusion. So what's our conclusion? So nails with the least rust has the best 
coating. Okay, guys, I'm getting a bit gastric. Uh, a bit suffering. But okay, guys, okay with the whole paper on paper six. You see, I've done once about paper six. You can realize that question one is about the naming, okay, about the analysis of mistakes and stuff. And number two, it's usually on what? So if you see number two is usually on the plot, the experiment, experiment plotting, okay, tabulation of data. And then number three is your test for your ions, test for your chemicals. Number four is planning experiment. And this is actually a fixed format in all past year. Paper six, every paper six, same, same format. Okay, so hopefully this uh, go through of this paper helps you to have a better idea on a better uh, on paper six. Okay, so hopefully, guys, can I all good? Huh? Can so okay. So, right here, after by doing this, this paper here, uh, guys, I think uh, I have to go for breakfast. Very, very pain. Uh, my guess, very, very pain. Uh. Okay, uh, what happened is after that, uh, I actually prepared like at least six past years okay because past year can be easily accessible online also right so in the google drive okay i the, the pdf i gave you it's actually having six past years okay so the next one is actually in the next one you see here is actually also may june 2019 but it's a version number two because each uh past year we have three version we have six one six two six three okay so what you can do is you can just spam all this this whole set of paper here this is uh I, I, because i i did one right i will left with five five other past years so you can actually go and try this yourself and then if you need the answer you can just find it online or you can just come to me or, or I, I will just upload into the google drive later on okay so if you see like the next page you see like uh, uh oh similar stuff guys right? similar stuff they ask you about some measurement and stuff uh but then guys Okay, thanks for coming into this live class, live stream on a very early morning of Saturday. Uh, I have to end this earlier because my gastric getting very bad. So guys, uh, the rest is actually all exercise really. So exercise is all up to you, okay? So please spam all the questions. Any question, please come to me, okay? So guys, if okay, I'm just going to end this live stream here. Okay, the, the rest of the exercise, please do it. And then any questions come to me. I will just call it a day for now. Okay, now, so hopefully, guys, uh, the brief idea of, of this paper six is actually in your mind right now. Go through the exercise, you realize all paper six is similar. Okay, so paper six is very, very easy. Okay, save yourself using paper six, okay? Paper six, don't give up. Huh? Uh, try to score the best you can actually get from here. Okay, guys, thank you. I'll see you guys in the next class in next week. Okay, bye-bye.